Yesterday, I, we went over long division, and those first questions on the worksheet, I ended up skipping them, because long division on those first questions is ridiculous. Now, in the book, which we should follow, um, there's an example, and it explains how to do it nice and easy. Um, the concept is, if you have a crazy-looking polynomial divided by a monomial, it's really easy. You just take that uh, denominator and split it to each one of them. So the 3xy is going to go under this guy, the 3xy is going to go under this guy, and the 3xy is going to go under this guy. Does that make sense? Let me uh, see if I could uh, help you out right there with the easier example. Like let's say you had um, 5 plus 15 divided by 5. Now because there's a, mono or a single number down here, you are able to split this 5 to both terms and write it as 5 over 5 plus 15 over 5. I mean, why would we do that? We wouldn't. I mean, 5 plus 15 is 20, and 20 divided by 5 is 4, right? But you could take this 5 and put it underneath the 5 and put it underneath the 15 and get 5 over 5 plus 15 over 5. That becomes 1 plus 3, which is also the same answer, 4. So when you have a denominator down there, it's only one term down there, you could split it to each of the terms that you're adding or subtracting up on top. So going back over here, on the example that they do, they simply take the 3x or 3xy and they place it underneath the first one, underneath the second one, underneath the third one. So that's what they did right here. They split it up. There's a 3xy, 3xy, 3xy underneath each term. Now the next part that they explain in the book, um, I don't like the way they do it. They take these x's and move them up and make them x to the negative 1. The y move it up, make it y to the negative 1. See, x to the negative 1, y to the negative 1. I don't like that. I would rather just focus in on each of these three fractions and just cancel terms out. So I would just say, oh, 3 and 6, that becomes a 2. The x cancels with one of these. You'll have three left up on top. One y cancels with one y. You'll have two y's left on top. Yes. So on your first answer, you're going to have a 2 left over, an x to the third, and a y to the second. And if you scroll down, or if you look down here at your answer, it is... Uh, 2x to the third, y to the second. So instead of uh, moving exponents around and making them negative, I just say cancel or subtract, right? 3 divided by, or 12 divided by 3, that's a 4 left over up on top. This x cancels out with one of these x's, you'll have 2 left up on top. This y cancels with one of these, you're going to have 1 left up on top. So your second part of your answer, the second part of your answer will be 4x to the second y, right? And that's what the second part of our answer is down here, 4x to the second y. And likewise, when you cancel all these guys out, you'll end up with that third answer. So I hope that kind of clarifies it. I, I guess my point is we're not going to use long division on every single problem, all right? Especially if you have divided by a monomial, right? You could use long division, but it really becomes way more complicated. So it's better to just cancel things out. Separate the denominator. Again, you separate this denominator to each of the terms, and then you cancel things out, and you'll have your answer nice and easy instead of doing long division. Now, long division is important, especially when you have a, a polynomial divided by like a binomial or a trinomial. Like right here in this example in the book, you have a, a quadratic trinomial divided by a binomial. So yeah, this goes inside the box, this goes outside of the box. You also want to make sure that you have every single exponent represented, power of 2, power of 1, and then a constant at the very end, right? Now, if you have any missing values, you have to represent them with 0, like 0x zero squared or 0x zero or even if you don't have a constant at the end, you have to put a zero right there. That way, when you do long division, um, it's all organized, and, and you'll be able to stay organized. Yeah, I said organized twice. Okay, um, let's uh, jump to 312. Okay, so on page 312, we have example three, and we already talked about this type of uh, problem. It's the same thing. You have a polynomial. Uh, times a binomial to the negative one power and a binomial to the negative one power really means that you're gonna take that binomial and move it underneath and it'll become positive which ends up being uh, a division problem right ends up being a division problem so what you really have on this example is uh, a squared plus 7a minus 11 divided by 
3 minus 8. <clears throat> now, I don't know if you guys remember the notes that we had yesterday or that we talked about yesterday. If you want to have the polynomials in standard form, you want your letter first and your constant at the end. So I wouldn't leave uh, this denominator as 3 minus a. I would switch it to make it look like negative a plus 3. This is the, the denominator. So inside the uh, box would be the a squared plus 7a minus 11. And outside of the box would be the negative a plus 3. And long division, the way it works is uh, simply thinking this first term times what will get us this first term right here the exact same term so it'll cancel out and I think they did it right here yes the only difference uh, from the book and from what I explained yesterday is that they put like okay negative a times what will get us the exact a squared value negative a times negative a will get us that exact a squared value right and negative a times 3 when you distribute it to the other one that'll be negative 3a and what I would do yesterday is I would put the, the subtraction bar and I would put this in parentheses with the minus on the outside. The book puts the parentheses on the outside with the, with the minus in it. Same difference though, okay? Because you still need to distribute the minus sign to each term. So that becomes a negative a squared, which cancels. This becomes a positive 3a, which 7 plus 3a gives you the 10a that you see down here, and so on and so on. So are we cool with long division? So if we continue to see uh, this example, you'll see that there's a remainder of 19. So the negative a minus 10, that is your answer, but we need to also throw in this remainder over the original divisor, all right? So what we're going to do, since this is a positive 19, I want to put a plus and then put that 19 over the original divisor, which is negative a plus 3 negative a plus three. So there's your final answer, the complete final answer. So jumping to page 315, this is gonna be our actual homework. Uh, we're gonna do numbers one through 15 odd, okay? So if we look at number one, we have a polynomial divided by a monomial. Are we going to do long division right here? Are we going to do long division right here? Heck no. Right? What are we going to do? We're going to take this xy and put it under the first term, put it under the second term, and put the xy under the third term, and then just cancel, and we'll be done. Okay? So let's split the xy to each of those three terms. Check it out. There it is. Okay? So the xy is on each of those three terms. And now it's just a question of uh, canceling things out. So if we look at the first um, term, the x's cancel. And also this y cancels with one of these and you have one y left. So our final first term will be 4y to the 1 or just 4y. Question? So on the second term, we're going to cancel out the x's and the y's. And what do we have left? We have a minus 2. And on the third term, we're going to cancel out 1y with 1y, this x with one of these. So we're going to end up with a positive 2x to the 1. So we're just going to leave it as 2x. Now the only other thing that you could do is write it in order, right? You want your... Uh, x's and y's first and your constant at the end so 2x plus 4y minus 2 would be the best looking answer for number one so uh, let's jump to uh, number three so on number three uh, this first term goes inside the box this one goes outside the box notice that they're already in standard form highest exponent 2 then the next exponent 1 and then the constant at the end same thing, letter and constant at the end. So they already are in order. You just write this one inside, this one outside. There it is. And once again, you focus in on your first term, x, and your first term, x squared, and you think, x times what will give me this x squared term, that same exact x squared value? x times what? x times x. 
So where am I going to write my answer x right on top of the other x, the 6x that is? You're not going to write it on top of the x squared. That wouldn't make sense. You want to be organized. x is on top of x's. So let's take this x and distribute x times x. We said that was x squared. And also x times 2, that is 2x, as in positive 2x. And what are we doing? We are subtracting. So let's put that in parentheses with the minus on the outside. And then we're going to distribute that minus sign, which will make it a negative x squared, and make that a negative 2x. If you're using the same colored pen, it could get a little confusing right there. So if you use different colored pens, it might make it easier for you uh, when you're subtracting here. So anyways, uh, x squared, take away x squared, that cancels out. There's nothing there. Uh, negative 6x minus 2x, it's negative 8x. And then, of course, we're going to bring down the minus 20. And once again, we look at our first term, which is x, and look at our first term, negative 8x. And you want the same exact value. You want a negative 8x. So x times what will give you a negative 8x? x times negative 8, right? So we're going to put a negative 8 up here. So, so far in our answer, we have an x minus 8. Now let's distribute the minus 8. Negative 8 times x, we said that was negative 8x. And negative 8 times 2, that's negative 16. And we are subtracting, so we're going to put it in parentheses with the minus on the outside. We're going to distribute that minus. So that becomes a positive 8x, that becomes a positive uh, 16. And when you combine, the negative 8x and the positive 8x cancel out. And when you combine negative 20 and positive 16, you get negative 4. Now that is your remainder, and our answer so far is x minus 8, so we're really adding and subtracting. So instead of a minus 4, I'm going to put minus and then the fraction. And I'm going to put 4 up on top, and I'm going to put the original divisor x plus 2 on the bottom. Now, I could have made this a plus and kept this a negative 4. That's fine. I chose to bring it down as a minus and make that a positive 4. Like I said, you could make it a plus and a negative 4 if you want. But this is your final answer for number 3, which is the second question on your homework. There's only about 5 left. I think you guys uh, could handle it from here. Right?